Um, the title that I uh, put for today's lesson is The Bad Bargain of Esau. Or I even put a new title, Yummy Stew. Does everyone know what stew is? No one knows what stew is. Huh? It's kind of like a manoodle. No, no, no. Uh, so everybody knows who, does everybody know who Esau is first? Esau was the twin brother of Jacob, son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. Um, well, if not, we'll kind of get into it a little, okay? Uh, one of the saddest figures, of, in a way, in the Bible is Esau, uh, firstborn of Isaac and Rebekah, and twin brother, like I said, of Jacob. He was loved very much by his father, uh, Isaac, and uh, he was a skillful hunter. Uh, and one of the things that Esau had was he was going to inherit the God's promise to Abraham. Basically, Esau was pretty much the chosen one, if you want to say. He was going to be the one that the line of uh, eventually would become Israel and eventually would come the line of David and then become the king of kings. Christ himself was going to come from this line. So Esau was... I mean, he had a lot going for him, you know? Uh, yet, on a crucial occasion, he traded his birthright for a bowl of yummy stew. That's when I was coming into that yummy stew. He traded all of that for some, for some yummy stew. So, how does this relate to us today? Uh, are we in danger sometimes of making the same mistake? Uh, the mistake that Esau made and you're probably thinking well I don't know I, I'm not really into stew or whatever so but we'll get into that okay um, <clears throat> in Hebrews 12 17 17 <clears throat> excuse me uh, and, and this verse will kind of make sense at the end when when we finish the lesson but but Hebrews 12 17 17 says for you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Let us pray. Father, creator of the universe, we give you thanks and we worship you. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be in your house. We ask for your guidance. We ask for insight into your word today that we may understand that you may give us knowledge and wisdom, that we may understand from the examples that you have given us through your Holy Spirit in your word that we may not make the same errors and mistakes as those that have done previously. We ask in your holy name to give us the Holy Spirit, to give us guidance. In Jesus' name we love you. Amen. Amen. Okay, so question. What is your yummy stew? Obviously metaphorically, right? What is your, what is your yummy stew? What is it that sometimes might not be the best decision, probably a very bad decision in many times, yet you it's still enticing to you, you know? It's still something that you're gonna that that you that you want and you probably know you shouldn't do it. You probably know that you shouldn't uh you know uh respond this way to this situation but yet it's hard to resist that's what i'm saying what is your yummy stew obviously for esau it was i don't know what it was stew when you think of stew it's probably like i think of like oatmeal for some reason i don't know why or like porridge oh no one knows where porridge is either right so okay so have you ever given something truly valuable for a momentary gain that's the question today whether this was a recent decision, or maybe it was something that we've done in our in our past. Uh, at that moment, maybe there was something that we wanted, something that we were engaged in, and we knew that it was a mistake, but we couldn't resist it, right? Esau is a character in the Bible who chose temporary pleasure over a long-term blessing. In the story of Esau, in the story, Esau s sells his birthright for a yummy bowl of stew, right? When we are born again, we all have spiritual inheritance, amen. Okay, so Esau sold his birthright. Now everybody here, first of all, we all know what birthright is, right? I mean, we don't really practice that in modern day, but in the old days, this is what people did. 
Everyone know what birthright is? If not, I'll, I'll read kind of the definition, all right? Uh, birthright is the concept of things being due to a person upon or fact of their birth or due to the order of their birth. So basically, in the old days, it was usually the firstborn male that received the inheritance, right? Uh, so if you were born, uh, and, and in this situation it was tough because Esau and Jacob were twins. Do, do y'all remember the story of uh, like supposedly when, when Esau was born and, and Jacob was like holding his heel? He was like, no, no, it's me. I want to be first. But nope, Esau got it. Esau was the firstborn, right? So right off, Esau contained the double portion of, uh, of his father's inheritance. Basically, he offered he was offered the rule and authority over the members of his family, the spiritual advantages of the of this particular birthright was the patriarch and priest of the house on the death of his father Isaac and chief and chosen of the chosen family and heir to the promised blessing. So basically Esau was the chosen one. Like I said, Abraham chosen by God, Abraham had Isaac, and then Isaac had Esau and Jacob and the line was going to continue from there okay so this was huge because whoever had this birthright whoever had this blessing was going to be the chosen one, who eventually Christ the Messiah would come from this line this bloodline was going to come from here so this was huge this was a big decision yet he traded it he sold it he made a huge mistake right I mean how many agree how many can say here is like yeah, he, 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 he pretty much messed up, right? How many here would probably be like, if I had that opportunity and all that at stake, would, would we make that same opportunity, uh, same, same mistake? Right off, we'd probably say no, right? I mean, no way. I mean, right off, you, you, we just kind of see like Esau made a dumb mistake. Let's just plan out and say he made a dumb mistake. But a lot of times in life, we get ourselves in the same situation, you know? Uh, we can make poor decisions in our life. Like, and sometimes it can be falling for the wrong person. You young people, a lot of times it could be falling for that girl or that boy or something like that. And, and maybe it's not the best decision. Maybe it's things that are going on in that relationship, you know? So we have to be careful. In times of momentary pleasure, we have to be careful not to make the same mistakes. Sometimes it can be choosing the wrong friends, you know? Now, everybody's friends here, and I believe everybody's choosing wisely here because we're all the body of Christ. But, like I remember growing up, I remember having a, a lot, uh, some friends that uh, in school, they weren't Christian, you know? They were good guys and stuff like that. But, I mean, because of that friendship, I was still exposed to a lot of uh, the things that they were doing and they were doing worldly things. And because of that, and the result of that, I made a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of dumb mistakes like Esau, you know, not necessarily for Stu, but other stuff, you know. Uh, so you got to be careful who you hang around with. You got to be careful what friends that you're hanging with. It could be at school. It could be at college. It could be at work, you know. It could be now what online. Everybody has multiple friends online. I don't know how that works, but I mean, everybody has friends now, right? It's like thousands and thousands of friends that you'll never ever see on social media. Okay, so be careful for the people that you hang around with. It could be going against your parents. A lot of times we might not think this, but a lot of times we make a lot of mistakes because we choose to disobey or go against the advice of sometimes our parents. What do I mean? Like, I was talking to uh, the, my wife the other day, and we're like, man, when now that we're, old, you know, we're a little bit older, and, uh, you know, uh, we have kids ourselves, and now I can kind of see that a lot of things that, and mistakes that I made in the past, now I can kind of explain to my kids, once they start getting a little older, they're still kind of young, but then I can tell them, guys, don't do this. But the problem is, are they going to listen? Because I remember my parents telling me almost the exact same thing, in a way. I think we're a little better now. I think, I think parenting has gotten a little better. We're a little bit more aware of uh, what's going on. Because the truth is, I got away with a lot of stuff when I was younger because my parents were just didn't, they didn't know what was going on. 
they were like stuck in their own world like i literally in school had my grandma's like phone number like so anytime i got in trouble at school they would call my grandma's house and and you know they were like hello uh, this is, is this the guardian of vishnu or the parents hello my grandma would answer and she'd be like no and she'd just hang up on them I mean, all the way till high school you know but now i know it's it's different now with uh, technology and stuff like that but what i'm saying is that a lot of times taking advice from our parents <clears throat> or a guardian and and i understand there's times when you're gonna have parents that how can i say it? they're deadbeat parents they don't they, they're not giving a good example and, and, and in that situation understand but you got to look at their fruits if they're doing good if they're good you know they're going to church or, you know try to to listen try to 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 pay attention sometimes the advice they're giving because experience is very important they went through a lot of that so that can help you out a lot to make instead of making bad decisions like Esau okay uh, peer pressure of course we know that peer pressures everywhere uh, doing drugs maybe it's something like that um, I know I don't know how big it I know when I was younger in school drugs was a big thing like everybody was like smoking weed and drinking and stuff like that and I remember even though I was hanging out with my like worldly friends or whatever which they did do a lot of drugs i remember that was never a big issue with me like it was never something that i struggled with like uh, i think i drank a beer once or twice when i was younger and i was christian you know but i still you know i tried it you know and i was like oh it's nasty give me a dr pepper you know like i just it just didn't get me but i saw other people you know uh, my, my friends and they got stuck on it you know and uh so one of the things that I've witnessed and that I've seen throughout my life is that the world and Satan knows how to get at your weakness. For example, me wasn't alcohol. It wasn't drugs. So, and, and, and for you, maybe for you, it might be something like that. It might be, you know, it might be the, the relationship that you're in. It might be a boy. It might be a girl. It might be social media, you know. It might be money. You know, my, who knows? There's so many different things, but the world and Satan always is going against and trying to pull on that weak link, and it's going to expose it, and it's going to find what is really going to kind of make you start enticing and desiring something. For Esau, at that moment, he was super hungry. He had been hunting, and at that moment, he was starving. So that was his weak point. And he went for that soup like crazy, right? And he gobbled it up. And I'm pretty sure the next day he regretted it. He was like, oh, man, it wasn't even that good. But, you know, still, he made that mistake. For us, like I said, it might not necessarily be, obviously, stew. Um, hopefully, it's not stew. But uh, it could be something else. It could, like I said, it could be money. It can be a relationship. It can be that boyfriend, that girlfriend. You know, it, we have to be careful because you never know how satan is going to entice you and we have to be ready for it amen it can even be rejecting going to church and that's what happens a lot too a lot of times we as christians we just stop going to church you know and this happens with adults everybody you know we just get to that point where eh, i'm going to stay at home or i'm going to do that and that's when satan starts coming in and starts tempting tempting you with other things that's how you start sliding and that's how you start getting into the point because a lot of times we don't just make mistakes automatically right it's kind of a process you know it's kind of like you're doing really good right now and then you start kind of getting a little lazy and you start slacking and you start doing these things and that is how satan works that is how the world works it starts just like whittling you know little by little uh, whittling is that that's a word right whittling like when you when you get like a piece of wood and you like carve something okay like shaving off something you know like little by little right and it starts getting at at you and eventually you wake up one day and you're like what am i doing why am i in this relationship why am i doing this why am i drinking why am i not going to church why am i doing this with my boyfriend or my girlfriend you know all of a sudden you're like oh my goodness how did this happen but sometimes you know you you regret it because a lot of times those things keep following you and we want to minimize that damage we want to minimize those mistakes amen okay so let us continue esau's bad bad bargain right 
He chose a sensual, the sensual over the spiritual. He gave in to his cravings of hunger. He valued the stew over his birthright. And for this reason, he was called a profane person by God. That's harsh. And now a lot of times we have been in the same situation. Now, how many here have felt like they've been in that situation before where they're tempted and sometimes they know y'all know that you have done something wrong and sometimes it's still hard sometimes you might be maybe it's something that you did in your past maybe it's something that you're it's going on right now in your life and you know you shouldn't be doing that but yet it's so difficult to get out of it you know it's kind of like an addiction advice um one of the one way i felt like to test how strong the flesh can be sometimes when it comes to the flesh versus the spirit, right? Because it's always that, right? It's always the flesh versus the spirit. Uh, I I remember one way of testing it is kind of like doing like a hardcore diet, or let's use a fast. We'll say a fast, right? Because this you can kind of see in real life how it feels. Has ever, everyone fasted here before? Raise your hand. All right, so everyone's fasted. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm talking about the real fast. I mean, I've heard people saying like, oh, I'm, I'm fasting right now. It's like, oh, praise God, what are you doing? I'm fasting from watching this particular thing on TV. You know, it's like, what? <laughs> you know, or like, I'm fasting from not using my phone from like midnight to six in the morning or something like that. It's like, oh my God. No, I'm talking about a real fast, like like not eating, like zero, nothing, you know? Not, not even the fast where like, I'm fasting from eating sirloin steaks or, or meat or something like that. No, I'm saying not eating nothing. Maybe just drinking water. So people, y'all have done those real fast, right? Okay. Well, have you ever done a fast? You know that after a couple of days, if you've done it a couple of days, I would challenge everyone to do like a three-day fast. Try to do a three-day fast. And you're going to see after a couple of days, and not even a couple of days, sometimes it could be like a couple of hours once you start it, you know, all of a sudden you start feeling very hungry. And you want food. It's like everything is about food now. All you can think about is food or all you can think about is how long is this fast going to last? That is the flesh going after the spirit. And it's real, you know? And that's just a, one way to kind of understand how uh, Satan works. Because that desire of wanting to eat sometimes is going to be a desire of wanting to do drugs. One is to go with your boyfriend. One is to, to uh, maybe go, get on social media, you know? we have to control it and we have to be prepared for it uh so i would encourage you to fast uh i remember one time uh the pastor my dad i remember he said he wasn't gonna fast he said he was gonna do a diet and uh and he said okay starting tomorrow i'm gonna start a diet okay okay good and i remember uh he uh you know he came to like i guess in the morning he would usually like I don't even think he would eat breakfast. I think he just drinks a cup of coffee in the morning and stuff like that. And then he won't eat till like noon or something anyways. And then we came to church and then I remember that day we had to go look at, we went to go look at some land in like Crosby. And it was like, I don't know, nine in the morning. And he was like, man, I'm really hungry. And I was like, man, I should get a coffee. And I think we stopped at like Burger King and he got a cup of coffee and a, like a double meat. What is it? Whopper? What do they have at Burger King? Is it a Whopper? Okay, he got a double <laughs> double meat whopper, you know. And he was like, "Man, I'm just so hungry." And I was like, "Okay, Dad, go ahead. You know, go ahead and, and take." The thing is that he never goes to fast food restaurants, and he never eats burgers. And just because he was just fasting for that little man, he 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 like fell into like he fell into the flesh hard, you know. So, anyways, it's very important that we understand and not underestimate. The power that the flesh, that Satan and the world has on you, you know, don't think that just because you're going to go into the situation, I can handle being with this boy or this girl. I can handle these friends. I can handle going to this party where they're going to have drugs and alcohol, but I can handle it. I'm not going to fall into temptation. I don't know. See, you just don't know. And you don't want to put yourself in that situation. So, uh, obviously, pray, you know, always have a good communication with God, but it's very, very easy to fall prone to that. Now, how often do we sell our birthright for stew? Now, as ridiculous as it seems, Esau giving up that bowl of stew 
it's hard to, to think that we would do the same thing, right? Like, like I said before, how many of us would have done that? And pretty much no one's, everyone's going to be like, I wouldn't do that, right? So let me give you, let's say a hypo, hypothetical scenario, okay? Let's say that your parents, guardians, whatever, they're multi-billionaires. I mean, let, right out, that, that, that's, that's awesome, right? They, they have all the money in the world. They're billionaires, right? And in about 15, 20 years, all that is going to be yours. That's pretty cool, right? Like, imagine what you could do with all that. I mean, right off, you know, you're like, wow, that's awesome. I don't have to ever go to work, you know, or, but, but then you can also think, look, what about all the good things I could do with it? You know, I can help the church. I can help my family. You know, I can, when I get married and have kids, you know, I can, they could go to the best schools or best education. I mean, it's that, you know, when it comes to all that wealth, you know, that's awesome, right? So how many here, if you were in that situation, like I said, your parents were multi-billionaires and all that was going to be yours like that boom it's going to be a debit card and say all, all of it's yours on this on your you know i don't know 25th or 30th birthday boom and it's all yours except the only caveat is that you got to listen to us all right and you can't be screwing around with boys and girls you know and i mean you can have a relationship and stuff but just you know, a good Christian relationship. And you know what I mean, right? You can't be going out doing drugs. You can't be hanging out with those friends and stuff like that that are not Christian, okay? And just basically the, the normal things that normal regular Christian parents want for their kids, right? I mean, nothing crazy. It's not asking a lot. It's just asking to, to, to live a good life. How many here would agree and say, uh, okay, I can do that. I can probably follow all those rules, and in a couple of 15 years, I'm going to have it all. How many could probably say I could do that? <laughs> I mean, right? That's a lot at stake, right? Because if you think about it, now the next time you go out and, and, and you're out there with your friends or whatever, and, and they're drinking, and you're like, man, I'm going to start drinking. But then you're like, man, if I drink, then I'm going to lose billions and billions of dollars so i'm probably not going to do that right it's not worth it okay so right off we think you know we would make the, the right decision the thing is that just like esau selling his birthright and giving up everything that he had at stake which was a super dumb dumb thing to do we do that constantly and what do i mean by that because see now when you think about it our father is christ our inheritance is way more than billions and billions of dollars our inheritance is everlasting life blessings and rewards that we will not just have for a short time but we will have for the rest of eternity so in a lot of ways what we have at stake is far far more greater than what esau had because esau was earthly bound ours is spiritually bound and in a lot of ways we are kind of when we make mistakes dumber than what even esau did in fact if esau was looking at what we had right now he'd probably say dude i made a mistake but you guys are really making mistakes you know because this is everlasting reward you know so we are in that same situation and i would even say thousands of times more greater because what is at stake is our heavenly blessing our father is giving us the inheritance we are the chosen one we are the ones that he chose to take out of darkness and to carry our cross and to follow him and all we have to do is follow his commandments obey him not be screwing around but try our best i know we're going to make mistakes but try our best every day to do what we're supposed to do to follow his commandments and if we do that God is going to reward us all. He says it. He says he's going to give us the inheritance. He's going to bless us. And, and the day that we, when God comes or we go with him, all that reward is going to be ours. Amen. Why don't we get a hand clap for that? I mean, hallelujah. So 
Are we making a bad bargain? How might, how might we sell our birthright? Giving in to pleasure, giving it to sin, lusting for the things of the world, walking after flesh rather than after the spirit. How might we, how might we hold on to our birthright? What can we do so we don't make the mistake that Esau made, that we don't make the mistake that sometimes we've done in the past? What can we do to keep ourselves away from that? To keep ourselves away from Satan and the world trying to go at that weak link and trying to make you and entice you for that yummy bowl soup, right? Uh, we have to be humble. We have to constantly carry our cross. Like I said, we have to pray. We need to, to, to pray for each other, to encourage each other. Uh, we need to read his word. We need to be prepared because I'm telling you right now, again, raise your hand if you've, you felt like you've been challenged before with, with certain uh, obstacles and things. You know, probably all of us. And if you haven't, I'm guaranteeing you right now, you will be. You will be. <laughs> that's from, uh, that's a Star Wars reference. Uh, you will be challenged one day. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But I guarantee you, if you are a Christ uh, disciple walking in, in, in this path, the devil and the world is going to tempt you. And he's going to push you. And he's going to put something in front of you that will entice you. It might not be this and it might not be that. But it's going to be something that will get you. And you have to be prepared. you got to be ready for it. Because a lot of times mistakes, we might think, oh, I'll make this mistake. But then, you know, I'll ask for repentance or this and that. I'm telling you, we as people are so good at, like, tricking ourselves. You know, we're, like, so good at saying... Okay, it's, I'm going to do this, but it's not so bad or, you know, this and that. And we can kind of, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just kind of to justify good. Try to justify what we're doing. We're good at that. So we have to be very careful. Always, always constantly pray. A lot of times you're going to be ridiculed. Like, it might, like I said, it could be a, a boyfriend or girlfriend, right? And it could be like, no, I'm not going to do this. You know, I'm not going to give in to sexual impurity or something like that. And they might, they might even break up with you. But sometimes if that's the, if that's what's going to take. Sometimes you have to take that path. Sometimes it's going to be friends, or they're going to be laughing at you. Say, well, why don't you want to drink? Why don't you want to do this? Or why don't you want to come over here? You know, you might end up losing those friends. But you know what? Sometimes that's the sacrifice we have to do. That's a sacrifice we as Christians must take in order to be separated from the world. Right? We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the world we have to be different from the world and a lot of times those um, uh, sacrifices are going to have to be made okay so those things are things that we're going to have to do in order to keep ourselves safe so like i said remain humble and the blessing remember that we are his servants and he deserves the glory talking about jesus May we remember that Esau traded his birthright, like I said, for a dumb bowl of stew. I'm not even going to say yummy anymore. And sadly, <laughs> sometimes we do the same. Jesus is our greatest reward. Through the Holy Spirit, we can cling to the birthright and reject the stew that the world has to offer. So, I would like to conclude that Esau made made a mistake, right? We all agree that Esau made a huge mistake. Uh, not holding on to his birthright and giving in to the desire of his flesh. As children of Christ, we must not fall to the same mistakes. Um, if we are not careful, it'll be a time, like I said before, a lot of times we can justify ourselves and make mistakes and we can say we can get out of it. And we probably have, you know, because we've all made mistakes. One of the things as a parent, as someone that I've kind of been through that a little, I would encourage you, though, that every mistake does have consequences. And we want to minimize those consequences as much as possible. Because sometimes you might do something wrong, you might make a mistake, and then you repent and 
you kind of got out of it unscathed, right? But you're not guaranteed that. I've seen a lot of people make mistakes and those mistakes will follow them for the rest of their life, you know? Uh, it could, for example, someone that's drinking, you know? They might say, you know, I'm just gonna drink one time and this and then they get pulled over that night they go to jail or worse, they get in a wreck they end up killing somebody, then, then they go to prison, you know? And those things can follow you forever. You know, I've known people like that. And it, it could be, uh, you know, a sexual relationship with someone that, that you weren't ready to be with, but now you have to because now you, you know, they're, you, you got them pregnant or they got pregnant or, you know. So you have to be careful because now you're in this situation. This is happening more and more. Uh, it can be getting into a relationship and not knowing exactly what you're getting into. We have to be careful all the time what we're doing. We have to be mindful of these things. Uh, remember the verse that I read earlier in Hebrews 12:17. Um, I'm going to read it again, and I think now it might might make a little bit more sense now. It says in Hebrews 12:17, it says. <clears throat> For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Basically, it's going to come a time when making mistakes and repenting is going to be over. And we are going to get on our knees and we're going to cry and we're going to ask God for our blessing. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to do this. But it's going to be too late. And that is what we want to avoid. At the end of the day, that is the most important thing. Our reward, we as a chosen people who God took out of darkness and wants to bless us all with his inheritance, with everlasting reward and life, blessings, he wants to bless all of us with that. But we have to hold on to it because we don't want to get to that point where we're crying and it's going to be too late amen so i ask you one last time are you in danger of selling your birthright if so we must avoid the desires of the world ask the lord for forgiveness and carry our cross each day let us stand and let us pray father god creator of all the universe, we give you praise and we thank you. We love you and we ask for your guidance and for your Holy Spirit to always give us that conviction that no matter what situation that we are in, that you guide us and that you protect us. Give us the wisdom, give us the knowledge, give us the strength that we may combat the, the desires and temptations of the world and of Satan. We know that Satan's out there like a roaring lion waiting to devour. And we know, Father God, that, he, that the world is enticing and the flesh is always constantly trying to pull out the spirit. But we know that you are greater. The greater is he. Father, we know that you are the king of glory and that if you give us the strength, then nothing, nothing can prevail over us. We ask for your anointing. We ask for your covering over this church, over this congregation, over this body that we may make the best decisions and we may minimize completely the damage that we could do to our lives, that we can have the best life even here on earth, that we can uh, worship you, be in that uh, uh, ministry, be amongst brothers and sisters and to glorify you. And then on that day when you come or you take us, we will inherit that blessing of eternal re reward. In Jesus' name, we love you. We worship you and we give you praise. And in Jesus' name we say, amen. Everybody, God bless you.